Hello, I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the founding and lead pastor of a non-denominational church here in Bloomington Normal called The Tab. And I would like to invite you to join us for worship some Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Tab is located at 1845 West Hovey Avenue in Normal, Illinois. I also want to invite you to visit our ministry website at thetab.tv. There's lots of wonderful resources and ministry there for you to take advantage of. Thank you for being with us today on this Tab Telecast. Here is this week's message. We've been in a series of messages on heaven and hell. It has been fantastic, has it not? And uh, we've been separating kind of fact from fiction. Really going to go into that today, uh, talk about some myths and folk tales, uh, and maybe even just some uh, concepts of heaven uh, that are going to be very, very, very fascinating uh, this, uh, this Sunday. So let's dive right into it. You're ready for the word? You got your outline, got your message? You got a pen in front of you? All right. Those of you watching online, take notes today. Uh, I'm going to share some just wonderful, wonderful things with you. You know, we're asking and answering numerous questions that many of you have had submitted uh, to us uh, that you've had about heaven and hell. In fact, we have got 21 questions, 21 questions that we're just kind of going through uh, this series and asking and answering them from, of course, the Word of God about the afterlife and about specifically heaven and hell. So uh, most of these questions have to do with heaven, but rest assured, we're going to hell. All right, we're going to, we're going to go to hell and we're going to see, not literally, but, uh, but, uh, but we're going to go and we're going to, because, you know, I want to scare the hell out of you. I really do. You do not want to visit there five minutes. And, uh, and, and so and it's a horrible, dreadful place. We're going to get there and, uh, um, and, 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 and be so happy we're not going there and, and going to the other place. Amen. I want to talk today and uh, specifically answer uh, and ask, of course, three questions. The first is this. What are the three heavens? In the Word of God, uh, the Bible talks about three heavens heavens. And that's going to be very important uh, that we understand what those three heavens are. Next Sunday, uh, matter of fact, the next two Sundays, we're going to be talking about uh, or asking and answering the question, what is heaven like? And uh, we're going to be going to Revelation 21. I skipped Revelation 21. Remember that in the book of Revelation series. Told you we were going to pick it up in our heaven and hell series because Revelation 21, there's some, some other scriptures obviously we use next Sunday uh, in regards to what is heaven like. Uh, it's a, a tremendous uh, detail that the Apostle John gives us of his trip to heaven in Revelation 21. So for us to understand the next two Sundays, we have to understand this Sunday. And that will make sense, okay, when we talk about it. So, uh, for us to understand uh, what heaven's like, we have to obviously talk about a couple of different things in regards to heaven, specifically the three heavens that the Bible talks about. So, let's dive right into it. Isaiah 55, verse 9, the Holy Spirit said through the prophet Isaiah, he said, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Aren't you grateful you serve a God that's smarter than you? Amen. That's brighter than you, that's more intelligent than you. I've never understood these major world religions that bow down to a wooden carving. I'm thinking, this guy can't even hear. These people, can't, I mean, they can't talk. I don't want a God lower than me. I don't want a God that serves me. And it's interesting that when... Um, the, uh, the, the ancient Israelites came out of Egyptian bondage, you know, and they thought Moses had died on the mountain. They said to Aaron, you know, make us an idol that we might worship. And they made themselves, watch this now, a golden calf. Remember that? Mm. Kind of interesting. Because calves, what? They serve us. Right? No one's following a calf. The calves are, right, are, are, are serving us. They're, they're workers for us. And isn't it interesting that, that many times the religions of our world today, they don't want a God that's higher than them. They don't want a God that's smarter than them. Why? Because they would have to worship it. They would have to serve it. We want to serve a God that's beneath us, right? A beast, a cow, right? A false idol. But that's not us. 
Hallelujah. We serve a God that what? His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His knowledge is beyond ours. He is omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing. And uh, he uses an illustration here to kind of just set up just how, how great is our God, right, than us. And he says, as the heavens are higher than the earth. All right, that's, that's, and we're going to see this. this. That's a pretty wide gap between our intelligence, our smarts, our way of doing things, and God's ways. In other words, it's not like, okay, we're here and God's here. You know, there's a gap here, right? No, it's like, as, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so far are my thoughts and ways above. You know, I got this, God's saying, right? And, and so that's our God. But notice the word heavens there. Look at it with me up on the screen. It's in the plural, isn't it? It doesn't say heaven. It says heavens. Well, what is God talking about? What are the heavens, plural, that God's talking about that are higher than our ways and His thoughts than ours? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's dive right into it. So let's go one, two, three. How about that? Let's start with number one. Is that good? The first heaven. What is the first heaven that the Bible talks about? Is the earth's atmosphere. We would call the earth's atmosphere the sky, right? The sky where the birds fly, uh, where the clouds float, that is what the Bible refers to as the first heaven, the earth's atmosphere. Job 35 verse 5 says, look up at the heavens, there it is again, plural, and see, gaze at the clouds so high above you. So when the Bible talks about the first heaven, what's it talking about? It's talking about earth's atmosphere. Now, again, that's very important because we're going to talk about this next week when the earth and the first heaven are destroyed. We'll get to that next week, okay? So that's very important we understand what the first heaven is. The first heaven is the earth's atmosphere, all right? And uh, look at this, Isaiah 55, verse 10. As the rain and snow come down from heaven. Where does the rain and snow come from? The clouds, right? earth's atmosphere, and does not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Now, we know that. You all been to, you know, science class and, and understand enough about, you know, the, the, the climate and, and the role of, of, of the weather and, and, you know, the water comes down from the earth and, 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 and it's cyclical, right? In, in terms of the sky, the earth's atmosphere. So, the first heaven, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about uh, uh, our sky, where, where the birds fly and where the clouds flow and where specifically the weather comes from. And I hate to say it, you know, it said the snow, right? <laughs> and where's the snow coming from? It's coming from the sky. And it, I hear it's going to be falling this week. I hope he's wrong, Chuck Collins. Oh, I hope you're wrong, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, push it back. A couple more weeks. At least give us to, till uh, November 1st, right, before the first, uh, first snow. Matter of fact, remember last, uh, last Halloween? The, the heaviest snow, the deepest snow was on Halloween. Six inches last, last, last uh, Halloween. I thought, okay, we're not going to have any trick-or-treaters. No, we had them. They were at, in the snow. They're going to get their candy, right? Those kids are going to get their candy. Hope went trick-or-treating in six inches of snow. Where there's a will... There's a way. There's a way, right? So uh, where does the snow come from? It comes from the first heaven. It comes from the first heaven, all right? So that's the earth's atmosphere. All right, the second heaven. What's the second heaven? It's outer space. Beyond the earth's atmosphere is the second heaven or the second level of heaven. Outer space where the, the moon, the stars, the planets, right? The galaxies, the universe is. Genesis 1 14 and 18, God said in the creation account, let the lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great lights. In fact, the larger one to govern the day, the smaller one to govern the night. He also made what? The stars. And God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to preside over the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. So the first heaven, again, is our, 
our atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere, the second heaven is outer space. It's, uh, it's where, again, the planets are, where the moons are, the sun is, the stars are, right? That's the second heaven. So, again, when we read in the Word of God about the second heaven, and they have a place. And it's interesting. Everything has its place because our God's a God of order. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He put this all together magnificently. I mean, it's amazing, right? I mean, you, you, you have to truly, uh, you know, turn your intellectual knob off to believe that there is no creator, that there is no God. I mean, this thing is so set up. I mean, it, 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 there is a creator, right? And he put everything in its place perfectly hanging right there. I mean, we all know about the position of the earth, right? We're 100 miles closer to the sun. We're all toast. We're 100 miles away from the sun. We're all ice. God put the earth exactly the right distance between us and the sun to where life would, would be, uh, be uh, able to live, right? God put all of this in the second heaven in outer space. All right. Well, what's the third heaven? All right. The third heaven is what most of us refer to as heaven. That is what? The dwelling of God. The third heaven, the highest heaven, is the dwelling place of God. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church at Corinth, his actually second letter, chapter 12, verses 2 through 4, talks about a man. Now, most biblical theologians, most historians believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that this man that went to the third heaven was indeed the Apostle Paul. Okay, that he was uh, translated either in body or spirit to the third heaven. All right. So let's look at uh, let's look at this and uh, hear what he has to say about this third this third heaven. The Apostle Paul writes, I know a man. I bet you do. It's you. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago. And he says this, whether in body, I do not know or whether out of the body, I do not know. But God knows. God knows, right? Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Did you see that? Well, Paul wasn't caught up to the first heaven flying around with the, the, you know, the eagles. He wasn't caught up to the second heaven and went to the moon. He went where? He went up to the third heaven. He went through the first heaven. He went through the second heaven. And he arrived at the third heaven. Whoo! That's a trip. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know that this man, because again, he's speaking with authority because it's him. Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but God knows. Was caught up. uh, We could say raptured. The same phrase for caught up, snatched away, raptured. Paul was raptured, right? Taken up. Where was he taken up to? Paradise. Paradise we've seen in the Garden of Eden, right? Uh, is, is, is the dwelling place of God. Was caught up, raptured to the third heaven, to paradise, and watch this, and heard inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. Isn't that interesting? Boy, that, that, would, be, that would be awesome, but it would also be terrible at the same time, right? You get to go to heaven, you get to see the magnificent dwelling place of God, and then God says, okay, you're going back to earth, and by the way, you can't tell anybody what you saw. You can tell them you went, right? I mean, he was kind of even hitting about that. Well, I know a man, I don't know, you know, whether he's in body or out of the body, you know, but God knows, and, and he went up there and he saw a whole bunch of things, inexpressible things he saw and heard, but he can't tell anybody. I mean, he, you know, <laughs> it's kind of comical, right? And uh, now... Uh, The Apostle John, of course, in the book of Revelation, was called up just like Paul was. And uh, fortunately, he was able to what? He was able to tell us what he saw. He was able to tell us what he heard, right? And uh, and he tried to describe it to the best of his ability, right? And we've got the book of Revelation. But the Apostle Paul says, yep, I went there. I just can't tell you what it's like. God, God forbid me to say that. Boy, that would be a tough secret. I mean, you think you're holding stuff back. I mean, this is, whoo, this is the good stuff. But he says, listen, I was caught up to what? To the third heaven. So when the Bible talks of the three heavens, we need to understand the references. The first one, the earth's atmosphere. 
The second one, outer space. The third one, what? The dwelling place of God. The abode of God. Now, when saints die, when Christians die, right, physically today, where do their spirits and soul go? It goes to the third heaven. It goes to where God is at right now. And we'll show that. We'll show you that. We've actually already talked about this in the book of Revelation, right? When we go, we go to the third heaven uh, to be with God. That's the dwelling place of God, the third heaven, paradise. Very well. Look at uh, Hebrews 4, verse 14. Hebrews 4, verse 4. Do I have that one down, uh, Brian? I guess I didn't. Okay. Um, let's continue. Let's continue. All right. Let me ask another question. Uh, this is a big one. Most Christians don't know this, but you're going to know it. Where is heaven located? Wouldn't you like to know where heaven is? Wouldn't that be something? That's some insider information right there. Um, we believe that there's a heaven. We know there's a heaven. People have gone there and come back. Uh, but where is it? Where is it? Well, what do we do? We turn to the Word of God, right? In regards to where heaven is located. And to do that, we turn to the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah 14, chapter, chapter 14, verses 12 through 15 we're actually going to read an account of uh, Lucifer, uh, the former archangel who became the arch nemesis of God. We know him today as the devil. And this passage of Scripture is specifically referring to uh, Lucifer and his angels that sought to overthrow God Almighty. They ascended into heaven. There was going to be, there was going to be this, you know, uh, galactic battle between, you know, the forces of good and the forces of evil. And, uh, and we're going to see how this turns out here real quick. But it, it gives us the location of heaven. So let's look at it. Are you curious? All right, I am too. All right, Isaiah writes, Oh, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Now, where, where are the angels? Angels right now are in heaven. Every once in a while they're sent to earth on assignment, and then they go back to heaven. Lucifer was an archangel. He was like a general, okay? And where were the archangels? They were in heaven. He says, oh, how you fallen where? From heaven. Where did Lucifer dwell? In heaven, right? But he's not there. Son of the morning, how you are thrown down to the ground. What ground is he talking about? He's talking about earth, right? You who weakened the nations, for you have said in your heart, here's what the devil said, I will ascend into heaven, that's the third heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Stars many times in the Word of God are symbolic of angels, all right? Above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Now we know, but just from our book of Revelation series, that God is sitting right now on the throne of the universe, right? With all power, dominion, authority at His feet, right? His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And His position is higher than our position. I mean, God's, the, God's at the top, we, on, sitting on His throne. And the devil says, I'm going to sit on the throne. I'm going to depose God of His power. Can you imagine this? I would have, maybe we'll get to see this on the big screen of heaven on replay. I don't know. I, you know, I like to see this. And I think God just went, you know, get out of here. All right, so he goes to heaven, and I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. You see that? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. That's the first heaven. And I will be like the most high. That's what the devil was saying. But what happened to him? I love this. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol. Sheol is another word for hell, right? To the lowest depths of the pit. So the devil says, I'm going to exalt myself to the highest heavens. And God says, no, 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 Junior. You're going down. And you're not just going down, down. You're going down to the, to the lowest of the down. You're right? The basement of the basements. The lowest pit of the pits in hell. That's where you're going. But notice where, where Isaiah places heaven to the north. To the north of what? To the north of earth. Isaiah 41, 25 says this, I've stirred up one from the north, and he comes. One from the rising sun who calls on my name. He treads on rulers as if they were mortar, as if he were a potter treading on the clay. 
So where is the location of heaven? Heaven is located north of earth. Right? Somewhere in the galaxy. Now, uh, that's a big, big, big place, right? There's a lot of real estate up there. Right? Uh, but it's north of earth. If we could get a glimpse, right, of, uh, of our galaxy and the positioning of our planet around the sun, it would be like God sitting on the throne looking down. Right? If, if, if heaven is north, north would be again above, right? North is above. Heaven, or earth is what? South of heaven. So that's where you, you read it in the scripture. See, this is going to make sense. When God says, I look down upon the earth. Why is he looking down upon the earth? Because heaven is north and earth is south. God never says, well, I look to the east and look to the west to see earth. Wow, Pastor Tim. I never, I've read those scriptures, I didn't know, isn't that interesting? God always says, I look down upon the earth. I look down upon the earth. Where? Where is the location of earth? It's located south of heaven. It's south of heaven. Now, where exactly in the galaxy is? Well, again, there's just some things we don't know, right? There's some mystery to it. But it's there. Heaven is somewhere in uh, the universe, specifically up. Right? I guess if we just kind of looked up to, hello, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and interesting, interesting, many times in the scripture it says, look up, thy salvation draweth not. We're looking up. We, we're, we lift up what? Holy hands. We lift up our eyes to heaven. Why? Because God is above us. God is north of us. We're south of him, right? And again, I'm grateful that we serve a God that's above us, right? Not beneath us. Not, God's not serving us. We're serving Him. We're serving Him. Where's heaven located? Heaven is located somewhere in the galaxy, north, north of earth. All right. Let's ask our third and final question today. This is good. This is so good. And that is, what is heaven? What is it? Let's, let's uh, uh, depose some of, the, some of the, the fact from fiction. Let's separate some of that here today. All right. What is heaven? What is heaven? Let's, uh, let's, let's look at this, uh, this place. You know, um, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 says, No eye has seen. Uh, oh, no, this is, this, is, this is wrong, Brian. What is heaven? Is a, is a, what, what will heaven be like is going to be next Sunday. We've got, the wrong, we've, got the wrong, we've got the wrong slides. Don't look at this. This is next Sunday. <laughs> Flip it off. Oh. Flip it off. Yes, yes, yes. What is heaven is the question I want to ask, ask and answer as we close here today. Very important. All right. I'm going to write it up on, the, up, up on the board here. All right. Number one, what is heaven? Heaven is a place. Heaven is a place. All right. Heaven is a place. You've got the scriptures. All right. On your, uh, on your handout. John 14, verse 2. Jesus said in the upper room, right, before his crucifixion and death, having the Last Supper. He said these words to his disciples. In my Father's house are many mansions. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there. Where is it? Where's there? The third heaven. I'm going there to the third heaven to prepare what? A place for you. So heaven is an actual place, right? Like your house, your apartment, your condo has an address. It's a place. I'm going to Grandma's house. Love Grandma's house, right? Get Grandma's cookies, right, and milk. We go to a place. You're going to go to work. You're going to go to a place. Heaven is a place. It's an actual location, again, in the universe, in the universe. And Jesus said, listen, I'm going to heaven, and I'm going there. Heaven's a place to prepare a, play, a place for you. Right? Isn't that good? See, you and I are going to have a place in the place. <laughs> right? We're going to have a home in heaven. As a matter of fact, there's no, it's not just a little apartment. It's a mansion. It's glorious. Um, and, and believe you me, it's going, to, it's going to be your dream home. Just like Barbie's got a dream home, you're going to have a dream home. And where is your dream home? In heaven. It's going to be perfect. I really believe that. You're going to walk into your, your mansion and go, man, this is everything I've ever wanted. Yeah, I know. It's going to be tailor-made for you, whatever it is. You want to live in a log home? It'll be a log home. You want to live with a you know, contemporary flat roof? That'll be it. You know, whatever it is, it'll be perfect. 
It'd be perfect for you. It'd be like, man, this is, this is great. This is my place. Yes. Right? That's where Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you because heaven's a place. Deuteronomy 26, verse 15 says, look, here it is. See, you just have to read the word of God. Just to, God says, he says, look down from heaven, your holy dwelling place, and bless your people Israel and the land you have given as you've promised on oath to our ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. So what is heaven? Heaven is what? A place, and specifically the dwelling place of God. Where is God the Father? Where is, where is Jesus? In heaven. Heaven is an actual place. I don't know what the addresses are in the galaxy, but it's got an address, right? And uh, it's interesting because the angels know how to get us there. That's why, again, we talked about a couple weeks ago, when we pass from this life to the next, our souls and spirits are escorted, ushered, remember that? Into heaven, taken from this place to that place, because we don't know where it's at. We know it's up. We know it's north. But the angels know how to get us there. Heaven is an actual place. All right? All right. Now, Number two, you ready for this? All right. I'm glad you're sitting down. This is so good. It's going to transform. Just, just hold on now here. Don't. Number two. I'm going to go ahead and say it and get it out there. Heaven is a planet. I told you it's good you're sitting down. Heaven is a planet. Okay, I'll prove it to you. Hold on. It's a location. It is a place. Um, we need to understand something. The Bible says numerous times that this world was created out of that world. That this, everything visible, everything visible was created out of the invisible. Everything that was per perishable, imperishable was created out of the perishable, right? And uh, just as earth... The planets were created by God. So was heaven. Heaven is a planet. I'm going to prove it to you. It's an actual planet. That's what I'm saying. In the universe. Now, I think it's, I don't know how many light years away it is. No one knows. God doesn't want us to know. Because you know what Space Force would try to do? Space Force would try to get there. You know, we're, we're trying to go to Mars. Let's go to Mars. Are you kidding? There's nothing on Mars. Let's go to the moon. Okay, great. I mean, could you imagine if we knew where heaven was? We'd do everything we could. In the, in the, aren't you telling every, every human being, every scientist, we'd be, okay, it's a million light years away. We're going to try to get there, right? And we, you know, but God doesn't want us to know. But trust me, heaven is a planet. And it is a material place. Just like our world is material, it is a material place. Um, and this, again, this, this kind of, is a paradigm most Christians have, have, have not really understood. So many times we just think heaven is this mystical, metaphorical, you know, place where we're going to float around on clouds and play golden harps all day. <laughs> you know what I mean? And wear white robes and adjust our halos from time to time. No, heaven is a planet. It has, can I say this? It has trees. And I'm going to show you this all next week. You have to understand this message to get to next message. There's streets. There's, you've got a mansion there. There's trees. There's water. There's, there's thrones, right? I mean, it's a place. There's chairs. There's food. I'm going to show you all this next week. It's, it, this world was created out of that world, if that makes sense. It's an actual location. Just like your home has an actual address. There is a planet in the galaxy, don't know where it's at, God doesn't want us to know, called heaven. All right? Hallelujah. Boy, I'm glad I got that out. Can I prove it to you? Let's look at this. You'll see it. 1 Peter 3, verse 22. The Apostle Peter talks about where Jesus went after His resurrection and ascension, right? He says, Jesus Christ has gone into heaven and is at what? The right hand of God, God's right hand, with angels, authorities, 
and powers, what? In submission to him. Do you see that? Where did Jesus go? Jesus went to heaven. All right. So can I draw it up here? Just kind of give us some, some, some uh, reference here. All right. So here is, all right. Here is planet heaven. All right. And here is earth. All right. Planet earth. So we have planet earth. We have planet heaven. Don't know how big heaven is. I think it's larger than earth, to be honest with you. Um, but where did Jesus ascend to? He went from earth, past the first heaven, past the, se the second heaven is the stars in between us, to what? To heaven? To what? To, um, to this new Jerusalem, the city of God. And to the throne room. Right? There's an actual throne room with 24 thrones around it. Remember that? The 24 elders, the four living creatures. Please nod your head and make me feel good because we studied it in the book of Revelation series. All right? It's an actual place. All right? There's an actual place. Now, I'm going to show you this. We're going to talk about this in detail next Sunday. I'm going to prove it to you next Sunday. There is a capital city in heaven. It's a four square city called the New Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is where God abides right now, right? That's where your mansion is. Your mansion is in the new Jerusalem. And I'm going to show it to you next week. Don't, come, don't miss next week, all right? But in the end, the very end of the end, Revelation 22, the Apostle John says, I saw the new Jerusalem, what? Descend, watch this now, out of heaven. And where did it come? It came down and it dwelled on the earth. But heaven's still heaven. Heaven doesn't come to earth. Only the new Jerusalem does. Boy, oh, Pastor Tim, you know your stuff. Teach us. Teach us, Pastor. Teach us. All right. Philippians 3.20. You got this written down? Where's our citizenship? Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, you have dual citizenship. You're a United States citizen, amen, but you're a citizen of heaven. So heaven is, yes, a planet, but here it is. It's also a country. It has a government. See, our, we have a government, right? I think we do. I hope we do. <laughs> God help our government. But there is a government governing the planet heaven from the new Jerusalem. And here's the thing. That president, that prime minister is God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. And he governs with justice and love and right? righteousness, the Bible says governs it. There is, there is rule. There is order. There's government in, uh, in heaven. And our citizenship by merit of what? Our faith in Jesus Christ is what? Is in heaven with God. Hallelujah. And only the citizens get to go in. That's very important. We're going to ask you to become a citizen at the end of our service today. <laughs> All right? You want this dual citizenship. Amen. All right, let's just look real quick. Let's kind of give you a teaser of next week. Revelation 21, verse 2. The Apostle John says, I saw, here it is, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Isn't that interesting? He, doesn't say, he didn't say heaven's coming to earth. He said, no, I saw this new Jerusalem. I saw the capital city. And we're going to talk about that in great detail next week. Oh, actually, it's going to take me two weeks. It's so good, it's going to take me two weeks to preach one sermon. All right? It's so, it, the detail is magnificent in Revelation 21. 21 verse 10, the Apostle John says, One of the seven angels carried me away in the Spirit, watch this now, to a mountain, great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Now, why I believe heaven is a planet? Because there's mountains there. There's lakes there. Uh, I believe there's oceans there. I believe there's deserts there. I believe that, you know, it's very similar to our, to our planet. But, but a million gazillion times better, Okay. And the Apostle John, just look at the position where he's at. He says, okay, so this angel comes to me, and he takes me up on this high mountain, right? And, of course, if you've ever been to a high mountain, boy, you can just see for miles. You can see sometimes for 20, 30, 
depending on how high it is and how clear the day is, 40 miles, right? So he says, I'm taken up by this angel, and we're standing on top of this high mountain on planet heaven. And there below me, I see what? I see the new Jerusalem. It's two separate things. It's two separate things. So heaven, again, that's why I think heaven is a planet. Just like ours, uh, but greater and grander. All right. He's given this vision of this new city, this new Jerusalem, and he's what? He's actually seeing it, again, at the very end. We'll talk about this next Sunday in what? Revelation 21, 22. New Jerusalem eventually comes where? Comes down to dwell on the new earth. On the new earth. And the capital city of God, which now is in heaven, watch this now, in the end, will be located where? Will be located on planet earth. All right, now let me kind of just throw something out here. So the capital city and the capital planet of the universe is heaven. But in the very end, I believe this on my heart, the capital city and the capital of God will be where? Will be on earth. The capital of the universe will eventually be the new earth. I'll prove it to you next Sunday. You got to come back next Sunday. You got to come back. Got to come back. Make plans. Put it in your phone. Set your alarm. Get up and get here. All right. Heaven is a place. It's an actual location. Heaven is a planet. It has a capital city. It has countries, what I'm trying to tell you. It has country. So we say, I, I want to go, you know, out in the country. Take a drive. All right. You'll be able to do that. Don't know what kind of cars we're going to have, but, you know, whatever. That's, that's to, to figure that out. All right. Heaven Harley. is Harley or Harley motorcycles. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three, number three. And this is, I believe, the most important, by the way. This is the most important. Heaven is a person. And I struggled with how to define this, but I think you'll understand my heart. I thought about saying heaven is a presence, but that's kind of spiritualist and that kind of is funky. Um. I think you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I think you'll understand what the Bible authors are saying too. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8. The Apostle Paul says this, To be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. He said in Philippians 1 21, For to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. In other words, he's gaining Jesus when he dies. He gets to see him face to face. So what really is heaven? Yes, heaven is a place. Heaven is a planet. We're going to go there. But really, listen to this. If Jesus wasn't there, it wouldn't be heaven. It'd be just another planet. Yeah. Does that make sense? In other words, I, I think the most important thing about heaven is the presence of God. Jesus is there. That's what makes it heaven. That's what makes it glorious. That's what makes it paradise. That's what makes it so awesome because of the presence of God. Does that make sense? I'm trying to explain it. You know, it's, you know I guess if... if Wherever we would go, if, if Jesus is there, it's heaven. It would, he, would, he would turn it into heaven, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because of his mere presence. And that's what's going to make heaven truly heaven, is, is God, is God's presence and God's glory. And just like I said, when we see Jesus, we're all going to bite the dust. It's just going to overwhelm us in awe and wonder and majesty and splendor and grandeur and Awesomeness. I'm trying to think of other adjectives that just we can't even, it's beyond words, right? It, that's what's going to make heaven, heaven. Yes, are there streets of gold? I'll show you. Yes, there is. Are there gates of pearl? Absolutely. Walls and cities and mansions and trees of life and waters of life and angels and living creatures and talking animals. But if everything is there and God's not there, then it's just another city. It's just another planet. It's just another place. What makes heaven heaven is the presence of God. Amen. Amen. That's the most important thing. That's why I say the, the most, I saved it for last. First Kings 8.30 says this, Hear from heaven your dwelling place, there it is again, and when you hear what? Forgive. Where is God today? God is physically in heaven. Revelation 21 verse 3. Says I, the Apostle John says, I heard a loud voice from the throne, from the throne room, saying, look, God's dwelling place is now what? Among the people, 
and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself, listen to this, here it is, please don't miss this, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. That's what makes it heaven, is we're going to what? Now, and, and that's what God's been trying to do since the fall of Genesis 3, is trying to get us back together, trying to restore presence, trying to restore, I mean, if you've ever been as a parent, I, my heart breaks for, you know, missing children. Can you imagine of, of not knowing where your child, and, and the, you would do everything you could to search for your child, and, and you, would, you would turn the whole planet upside down looking for a missing child, right? And you would do everything to restore presence and to restore, bring them home and hug them and kiss them and love them. And that's God. See, we've been missing since Genesis 3. Or, yeah, Genesis 3 with the fall, and God's been trying to restore presence. That's why He sent Jesus. He said, I, I love you so much that i got to restore presence. I want you to dwell with me. I want to dwell with you. See, God wanted a family. That's, we're His children, right? That's why Jesus said, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven. Are you seeing this thing? So God says, and, and finally, the, I love this. Look at this with me. It's so awesome. Revelation 21.3 is what I'm talking about. It wasn't just a, an, an ordinary voice. A loud voice. Almost like, yes, finally. <laughs> look. And he's saying, look, 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 look. God's dwelling place, right, is now what? No longer separated. It's now come together as one. Let's go back as we close. John 14. Go back to the upper room again before Jesus' betrayal and crucifixion. John 14, 3 through 4, and verse 6 says this Jesus said to his disciples on the eve of his death, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Are you seeing this? You know the way, Jesus said, to the place where I am going. Verse 6, over there on the wall, just in case you need to look at it. I am the way, Jesus said. I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What is he talking about? Jesus is saying, listen, I'm going to heaven to prepare a place for you. And when it's all ready and set, I'm coming back. That's the rapture. And I'm going to take you to be with me where I am so that we can be together forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And oh, by the way, you know the way to the Father. What's he talking about? He's talking about heaven. You know how to get to heaven. And of course, you know, one of the signs said, well, we're kind of dumb, Jesus. How, how we get there? You know, how do we get there? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to what? The Father. No one goes to heaven but by me. So there's a highway all right. There's a road. That road's name is Jesus. How do you get from point A to point B? There's a road, right? There's a highway. How do you get from Bloomington to Decatur? Well, there's a road. There's a highway, right? And Jesus says, we're here on earth. My Father's in heaven. You know how to get to heaven. I'm the way to heaven. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Matter of fact, no one's going to heaven except by me. Isn't that good? So, in closing today, I just want to ask a simple question. Do you know the way? Do you know Him? Not about Him. You know, there's a lot of people who know about Jesus historically. You know, He was a man. He lived 2,000 years ago. And No, do you know Him? Have you invited Him into your heart and life? Have you accepted Him as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you asked Him to, to come and, and remove anything that separates you from Him because it's all about what? Restoration. Restoring presence in your life, in your heart. And here's the wonderful thing. Isn't it glorious? Isn't God good? That we don't have to die and go to heaven to receive presence here and now. That God sent the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost. That when we accept Jesus Christ in our heart and life, the Holy Spirit says, or the Bible says, that the Holy Spirit comes and indwells our hearts and lives. That we can experience the presence of God here and now, on planet Earth, by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that good? 
and we receive the Holy Spirit, watch this now, as a deposit. You know, when you lay down a deposit, it's like, okay, here's a, here's a little bit of things, but the, the vast majority is yet to come. When you put a deposit down on something, you know, I want to buy that car, you know, I'm a car costs $50,000, I want to put a $1,000 deposit down. You got $49,000 yet to come, right? The Holy Spirit, just what we experience here in this life, it's just a little dabble, do you? It's just a little taste of future things, what? Yet to come. Can you imagine how, I mean, how glorious it's going to be when we get to the fullness of our salvation? I mean, it's going to be so incredible, so awesome. It's just going to blow our minds. It's going to be, it's beyond our thoughts, beyond our wildest imaginations, as, as the Bible tells us. So in closing today, do you know the way? Do you know the truth? Do you know the life? Do you know, do you know the Savior, Jesus Christ? Are you, are you one with Him? If not, I would love to, to conclude today, lead you once again in a prayer to simply ask God to be the Lord and Savior of life. Would you do that with me today? Would you bow your heads and hearts today? And if you're watching us online, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would love to lead you also in this prayer, simply a prayer asking God to come into your heart and life, to be your Lord and Savior, to assure you for heaven as if you were already there. Let's pray today. Say these words after me, church, and say them loud and say them proud. Dear God, I come before you this morning, a sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart and life and be my Lord and Savior and help me live for you all the days of my life and help me be a witness for you all the days of my life until I'm with you in heaven forevermore. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, 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 Amen. Hallelujah.